Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be a Q&A video that I'm going to be doing because this is one of the most common bass questions which has to do with two of the most popular bass guitars. The question of course is what is the difference between the J bass and the P bass? Obviously you can't really answer that in just one line. You kind of have to break it down or split it up and many people have different ideas or beliefs of what is the difference between the two. Some people think that there is no difference between just the looks of them, uh, things like that. So I'm going to do my best to compare the two and show you what the differences are. Here I have two identical bases. Of course, they're not identical in looks because one is a P bass, the other one's a jazz bass, but they're both by the same company and they're both Affinity Series, so they're in the same caliber of instruments. I think this is the best way to compare the two. And we're going to start with the P bass. Now, as you can see right off the hand, the P bass is a very simple looking bass guitar. It's got uh, pick guards, it's got the pickups on there, it's got some knobs, and you're pretty set to go with this instrument. There's not much you have to learn about. Uh, anything when you start to play this, at least when it comes to what is on the bass itself. It's very, very simple. It's very simple yet effective. The story of the name P bass is, is a little varied around the internet and other places that you'll hear about this. A lot of people say that it's called a P bass because of the P style pickups, because it looks kind of like the letter P, which is what I thought for the longest time. But actually, legend has it as this is one of the first electric basses. This is actually the first electric bass. And when electric basses came out, or when this bass came out, this was one of the first basses with frets on it. So P stands for precision. It was made so that you can be precise with your notes. Stand upright bass, those ones that were upright, those were, or still are, fretless. So you kind of have to go by feel or you have to learn how to play a fretless instrument. This is the first electric bass and first to have frets on it. So the way that it sounds, now this bass has a very heavy bottom end. It's, it's called a bass guitar and it's got a very nice bass. It kind of lacks on the treble and you can gain and cramp up some mid-range but some, so the treble isn't very amazing on it. Of course it does have treble because all instruments naturally will. This bass does more on the bassier side, has, has more of a bottom end, would be a 15 inch speaker compared to a 10 inch speaker if this was a speaker. The controls are very simple, there's one volume and one tone. Of course this is a standard series bass guitar so there's no active controls on it. This can be changed if you have an active bass guitar. Then if you're moving to an active system, that's going to be more complicated. This is an all passive instrument. If you look at the neck, right around the first fret, the neck is wider. Of course, as a natural neck will go, it does start to slim out from the from the higher up section. It does end up being wider for your hands to be in first position, and you can actually notice that if you compare the necks. This is one of the first instruments out there when it came to bass guitar and electric, so it is about as simple as it can really be. The P-style pickups are a little bit different because they're not humbuckers, they're not single coil, they are specific pickups for this specific instrument. Of course, other basses have P-style pickups in them, and a lot of them now, and they've become very, very popular. The styleability and playability of the P-style pickups are that of nothing else. You have to get P-style pickups, or on a P-bass, to get this sound. There's no other pickups arrangement that will sound just like this P-style configuration, which is why you'll see P and J style pickup configurations, because people want the best of both worlds, meaning they do want the fat sound that comes out of these. One thing you have to take into consideration is that I have taken out the original pickups and installed the DiMarzio split P's, so the quality is going to be a little bit different. Other than that, it is an Affinity Series Squire bass compared to the other ones, so there's not going to be that much of a difference, but you will be able to hear the difference between the two. So as you heard, a little bit more of a mid-range there, a little bit more bassy, actually a lot more bassy. Another consideration that you might want to take is the strings are a little bit old, so that, but you do notice that there's a lot of bass. 
Stepping on over to the J base, you can notice that it looks significantly different. Some people might argue that it looks a lot better because it, it has more fancy body shape cuts and things like that. It's not very simple, or, or in, in, in minds at the time, it wasn't very simple. Going straight to the name, this isn't necessarily made for jazz. This is called a jazz bass, but it's made for a lot of types of music. Of course, people think that, or some people at least, think that this is specifically for jazz and should only be used for jazz. It sounds really good in jazz. I, I've played jazz music with the J bass, but I've also played jazz with the P bass, and I've played jazz with five string basses that are made specifically for metal. So you can play jazz however you want to play jazz. This is just called the J bass because it's called a J bass. You don't really have to use this just for jazz. But right off the bat, you'll notice that it's got two single coil pickups, which actually are hum canceling. Normally when you hear about single coils, you don't really think about hum canceling, you only think about humbuckers. But these actually are less noisy. They're separate rather than the two which are connected by one volume and one tone on the P bass. These are separated by two volume knobs, meaning you can solo each one of them. This bass has more mid-range. It's, it's got a pretty good treble line, but it actually cuts a little bit of the bass. Uh, people say that they don't get as much of a fat sound, a round sound, when it comes to the J bass. They get more of a snappier, punchier sound. That's not to say that there is no bass, or it, it lacks so much that it really doesn't have any more bass, and you really should add more. Of course, you can always turn the EQ up on anything that you're using. It just naturally has less bass or less fat tone than the P bass. And with that comes the variety of knobs here. Of course, it's got a master tone knob and two volume knobs. You can do a lot with this instrument. It's very versatile. You can change things out and you can solo things and add different types of uh, different types of blends. You can turn up one pickup all the way, have one kind of backed off a little bit and get a get a nice warm blendish sound. You can turn both of them all the way up. You can turn one all the way down and solo a pickup and you can do different things there. So the versatility of this instrument compared to the P bass is far above range. You can get a lot of different sounds out of this bass guitar. Of course, the advantage that it has does come with the fact that it came after the P bass. So whatever the P bass kind of lacked, this thing was able to take care of. So you can actually have the best of both worlds by owning both or you can choose which one you want. Something that a lot of people notice about this bass and actually is the determining factor if they're gonna get it or not is the fact that it's got a very thin profile neck. Right around here, it's a very, very thin neck. It comes to a, from a regular position all the way to a very small, thin area around the first fret. Compared to the P bass, it is a lot thinner. It does have new strings on it, so it's gonna sound a little bit better than it normally would compared to the other bass, but you can still hear the difference. I'll solo the bridge pickup now. Soloing the neck pickup. Just a bridge pickup. Just the neck pickup. So as you heard, it's got a very articulated sound. It's got a nice punchy mid-range. It's got even a good treble line, but it does, of course, lack the bass that 
the fat sound of the P has. Also being able to solo each pickup you can actually lose even more bass by just soloing the bridge pickup because the bridge one gives you even more punch and articulation and then if you turn that all the way down and solo the neck you can actually get more of that deeper warm basser sound, bassier sound. Of course not comparable to the P bass but one that will compensate for the bass or no bass that comes out of the instrument. Something that you also have to consider when you're comparing the two is the name brand, the company that you're using, the caliber of the instrument that you're using. These are both Squire basses and they're both the Affinity series, so they're comparable. If I had an American P bass and a Squire J bass, that's not comparable because one is going to be over quality on the other one and will sound good no matter what compared to the other one. Of course, Fender and Squire are the two major companies that make P and J basses because Fender is the one that design the two, but other companies make something that are comparable to J-Basses because they have J-style pickups on them, and other companies will also make P-style pickups with their basses as well. So if you're comparing the two, you probably want to get something from the same company at the same price point so you can actually hear the difference for yourself. Like I said before, you can't get a P-Bass from Korea and get a J-Bass that's American-made and one being a Fender, the other one being a Squire, and try to compare the two because it really isn't going to give you a great idea of what the differences between the two are. You will be able to hear the slight difference in, in how each should sound, but again, one's going to dominate the other. You don't want that to happen. You want to get something that's comparable. Something as an overall difference between the two when it just comes to sound is actually said best here on YouTube. I forgot what video it is, but it's one of the best comparison notes I've ever heard in my life. The sound of the P bass is like a slap to the face, just like a hard hit to the face. Whereas the sound of the J bass would be a chop to the neck. Now one is one is a lot more round, one is more one is more well hit, well placed, the other one the other one's kind of a snuck up attack on you that, that will just kind of snap on your on, on your opponent. Of course it's a very violent way to look at it, but it is something that I would agree with when it comes to the sound of the two. When it comes to the company that I'm using, it's just the caliber of how robust the hit is, meaning the Squire is a hit in the face, but it would be a little person compared to somebody that's rather large when it comes to a Fender. And same thing with this this uh, this jazz bass right here. It would be a karate student chopping into the neck versus Bruce Lee. Some artists that use the Fender P are Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. He's a really cool bass player. I actually do like his stuff a lot. Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses, who is a great influence to a lot of bass players because some of the stuff that he did, I just can't imagine somebody thinking of at the time. I really, really enjoy a lot of the styles that he actually does, and, and the fact that he uses a P bass kind of gives me a, a, a righteousness to, to use this instrument. I think that it's really cool. Also, Mike Drint uses a P bass, and he doesn't use one that looks like the one that I have now. He kind of uses a different one, which I think is comparable to the 60th anniversary. But he's also a very cool artist because he's part of a power trio, which don't really exist anymore and he does his job perfectly because if you're the only bass player in the band, which he is, you gotta make yourself prominent, which he does. So if you're the only bass player in the band, check him out. He will give you some pointers, at least by listening to him, you can get some pointers on how you should sound. Some people that I've chosen the J bass include Marcus Miller, who's got my favorite jazz bass of all time. And I've actually considered that one of my favorite basses of all time. One of my top five favorite basses would be the Marcus Miller signature, which is the Vintage 75 series jazz bass. Getty Lee who is a very amazing bass player. He's known to be using J basses in his band Rush, which I think is really awesome because the sound that he gives up, the sound that his bass has is really isn't comparable to anything else. If you want to get the J bass sound that he has, you probably want to get his signature model. And some of the douches from Warped Tour. An artist that actually blends the two basses is Mark Hoppus from Blink-182. What he does is he takes the P style pickups and puts them in a J body with the J neck. A lot of people say this is a very cool move because it, he gets the sound that he wants out of the P and he gets the comfort of playing a J. That of course to some people is the ultimate punk sound, is the ultimate playability, is the best style because it's very very simple. He's got one volume knob, no tone, nothing. It's just the P style pickups, that one volume knob, and he's got the style of body that he chooses. Of course if you want to check that out you can probably watch some videos of him playing it. If you can find his bass at a store you should probably try to play it and see what you think. My personal choice between the two has to be the P-Bass. I used the P-Bass first, I learned everything that I learned on the P-Bass. I like the playability, I like the style of sound. I do think it's more comfortable playing the Jazz Bass and I have used a lot of these 
um, stage and I've done a lot of work with jazz basses, but if I had to choose, I would choose the P bass over the jazz bass. That's not to say that you should choose the P bass, you should choose whichever one you think is better. There is no one is better than the other. That is only going to be in your eyes. It is your opinion to say one is better than the other. I don't think that the P bass is better than the jazz. I just like it more to play. I would choose it in my arsenal of bass guitars. I don't think it's any better than the jazz. I think each one of them have pros, each one of them have cons. To really have the ultimate in sound, you probably have to have both. But it is up to you whether you think one is better than the other. And you can't tell other people that one is better than the other because that's your choice. Somebody might like a different bass. There's a reason that both of them exist. If one was truly better than the other, the production for the other would stop because they're wasting wood, hardware, parts, strings, everything that the factory could be using to make the one that's better. If you guys have any questions on this subject, I will try to answer them in the comments below, and if there's too many questions, I'll probably put it in another Q&A video, but that is the main differences between the P bass and the J bass. I'll catch you guys back here next time. Yeah.